Actually, uh, options expiry kicking in, so kind of lending a bit of stability there, but what have you made of the first hour before we go stock specific? It's looking quite mm. flat on the Aussie share mm. market. We're basically where we closed the day yesterday. But it is our biggest stocks uh, dragging on our market. We're seeing a bit of weakness in the materials and the banking space, and that's really uh, leading to a little bit of weakness. But on the flip side, we're seeing the property sector doing extremely well. Property space is up by about 1.4%. Of course, this is after weaker leads from the U.S. overnight, but we did see some good economic data coming out with new home sales up by 5.7% for the month of September. And we also saw Facebook shares soaring more than 19% on the back of its profit result. But altogether, a pretty slow start to the first hour of trade in the Australian share market looking pretty flat at the moment. Echo shares aren't looking too great, though. What do you think it is in particular that's coming through from um, what it's had to say at, at the AGM? Obviously, talking about positive revenue from the star, but Queensland Casino is not looking great. Friday, the key driver of Echo share price at the moment is uh, Genting as well as Crown's intention to lift their stakes. And of course, with Crown getting uh, the backing of the states in order to get a second casino license in Sydney, uh, the urgency to raise its stake in Echo seems to have dissipated, and that's putting a little bit of downward pressure on Echo Entertainment. Echo Entertainment, of course, has its annual general meeting today, and it has given an update on the first six weeks of the year so far. We know that the star has now been completed, and that's a key driver of revenue so in the first six weeks we have seen revenue up by around about 13 percent but that's really been driven by the completion of the star the star revenue uh, seeing uh, an increase of 27 and a half percent as you mentioned Bridie the Queensland casinos though seeing revenue decrease in those first six weeks so a bit of weakness there and a bit of weakness also in echo entertainment share price so down by 2.1 percent in the first hour of trade Right, we've been looking at ANZ right from the get-go. It's been sold off. Uh, in terms of uh, rising commercial loan arrears, that's come through already as one concern. Dow Jones Newswire is also picking up on uh, Credit Suisse, which is disappointed by uh, those net interest margins. Uh, what's your collective reason or rationale for these, for these declines? It's a bit of a mixed reaction mm. to ANZ's uh, results today, mm. but I guess it has to be kept in context of ANZ's share price. And since the beginning of June, we've actually seen ANZ's share price up by 20%. So that's been a massive performance. In terms of the actual profit result, it has come in line with expectations. But there are c some concerns around the net interest margin, which did come in lower than expected. The market was expecting to see 2.37% and actually came in at 2.31%. Also signs that commercial loan arrears are on the rise there as well. So a, a bit of concerns on the current financial year 2013 and of course the outlook from the company saying that 2013 will be a more challenging year. So ANZ, a record profit result coming in line with the expectations, but we have seen some concerns around the net interest margin, rising our commercial loan arrears, as well as the, uh, the outlook statement, which points to a more challenging current financial year. So we are seeing ANZ shares down today. Margins, I guess, too in focus for a company like West Farmers as well after we've had its uh, update there on the, the, for the quarter so far. Um, what do you think of uh, what it had to say? I mean, is the discounting and I guess the level of margin certainly from the resources side of its business a concern? I think we've seen a very solid result coming through from West Farmers and it does look like that food and liquor momentum continuing in terms of positive momentum and West Farmers first quarter result has beat Woolworths' first quarter result. It is that food and liquor division which really drives the share prices of both of these stocks and if we have a look at food and liquor for West Farmers we saw an increase of 4.9 percent or on a comparable basis a rise of 3.7 percent. Now that outstrips and beats Woolies results. Woolworths saw uh, food and liquor up by 4.6 percent and on a like for like basis up by 2.3 percent both companies have been grappling with price deflation in their supermarkets division division and no different uh, this quarter we've seen our uh, price deflation of 3.2 percent and in fact if we have a look at the last 13 quarters now we've seen 12 quarters of price deflation so we have seen prices falling part of that due to the supermarket wars um, but home improvement was a highlight we did see uh, an increase of 4.7 
7% in sales there. Um, Bunnings up by 5.1% and on a like-for-like -like basis up by 2.5%. So you can see really why Woolworths wants to get into this hardware space through Masters because there are some attractive sales uh, growth rates coming through there. We did see some good numbers coming through from Kmart and Target as well, which is a bit of a surprise. Kmart up by 3.1%, Target up by 2.2%. Now the Target one was distorted a little bit because we did see the toy sales, which are usually in July, brought forward to June, and that's really distorted the Target number. But both in terms of Kmart and uh, Target, we are seeing some more direct sourcing happening, less discount happening, and also uh, improved stock uh, inventory uh, stock inventory uh, management as well. So that's really helping the results there. So all in all, looks like West Farmers' result coming in ahead of Woolworths' result, uh, which wasn't too long ago. A very solid result, and that food and liquor division continuing with the positive momentum that we've recently seen.